Hey, Freddy with CJ Pony Parts. When hauling heavy loads with your truck, whether in the bed or with a trailer, the rear end of the truck would tend to sag lower than the front, causing uneven weight distribution, which is unsafe and can cause an uncomfortable ride. One way to combat this is by installing a load leveling kit. This airlift ride control adjustable air spring kit will fit your 2010 through 2014 F-150, but not your 2010 Raptor. This ride control kit will allow you to raise the rear of the truck with up to a 2,000 pound load, which will improve handling, braking, headlight aim, and will reduce bottoming out over bumps. This kit includes everything that you need from installation from the brackets, the pump, wiring, plumbing, and the controller. Since the owner of this 2014 F-150 EcoBoost behind me does a lot of towing, we're going to make his truck a lot safer today by installing this airlift ride control kit. For this installation, you'll need a lift or a jack and jack stance, quarter inch ratchet, 8mm socket, 10mm socket, half inch ratchet, 13mm socket, 18mm socket, an extension, a half inch wrench, 9 sixteenths wrench, 3 quarter inch wrench, a pair of cutters, wire strippers, cutoff wheel, and safety glasses. First thing you're going to want to do is get the truck up in the air and take the wheel off and then remove this bump stop with a 13 millimeter socket. Now with the bump stop off, we can remove these two tabs. To remove these two tabs, you could use a hacksaw, a sawzall, a dremel, really any cutting tool. We're going to be using this three inch or it used to be a three inch cutoff wheel. Now that you have these cut off, you need to make them completely level with the rest of the bump stop. Now we can install the upper spring mount by installing a J-hook in the frame rail. Then grab your upper mount, put a J-bolt with a washer and nut on it, and put the J-bolt through the other hole. Just get these loosely installed for right now. Once you get the bolt through the bump stop, install it into the upper mount. You're probably gonna need an extra set of hands for this. And you wanna leave this a little loose so you can get everything adjusted and then torque everything down. Then you can start to torque these down. Now these bolts are a little bit too long to get a socket on them because we need to torque them to 10 foot-pounds. So we're gonna cut these down and then torque them. Now we can torque these to 10 foot-pounds. With the upper mount installed, we can now install the lower mount with the spring. To start off, we're going to install this air fitting to the top of the spring. You're going to thread this in by hand, and then once it gets hand tight, you're going to give it two turns with a half inch wrench. Now do two rotations with a half inch wrench. One. Two. To mount this up, you might have to blow some air into the spring or pull it out because it does come a little bit compressed, so we elongated it by blowing some air into it. Grab the supplied bolt and washer and put it through the slot in the mount and loosely install it. Now we can install the spring and lower mount you want this angle part of the bracket facing outwards, the inside of the bracket 
won't have anything. And place it on top of the leaf spring. You can now install the supplied U-bolts. And put a washer on each side. And then the supplied nylon nuts. And install the other U-bolt. Then you can tighten down these nuts with a 9 16 wrench. This might take a while. Now with the spring and lower mount secure, you can put this nut on top of the spring. Get it over the air fitting. Now with an adjustable wrench, we can tighten up the nut on top of the spring. With a three quarter inch wrench, you can tighten up the bottom bolt. This step isn't entirely necessary, but these U-bolts are a little bit long and they're kind of ugly, so we're gonna trim them down and make them look nice. Now that the spring is in place and everything's tightened up, you can repeat the process on the other side. We can now mount the manifold and the compressor. We're gonna be mounting these underneath the bed right near the gas tank. We had to fabricate this little S bracket for the manifold. You can mount these however you would like. They don't come with brackets, so we decided to make our own. And we put some adhesive foam on here to insulate it from the gas tank so it doesn't rattle. We're gonna be drilling two holes right here and using self-tapping screws to secure the brackets. With the holes drilled, we can now use the supplied self-tapping screws to install the bracket. Now we can install the compressor using the self-tapping screws. We used the supplied hose and cut it to length, and now we can connect it from the manifold to the compressor. To make this a little easier, we actually heated it up with a heat gun and it slid over perfectly. Now we can connect it to the manifold. We can now install this T-fitting to the manifold. This is gonna branch off the lines to go to each spring. And now we can run a line to each spring off of this T. We have the airline running straight off the T this way towards the frame of the truck and then down the frame. Now we can connect it to the spring. Now we can repeat the process on the other side. We're now going to install this auxiliary air hose that has a Schrader valve on it. You can choose to install this wherever you want on the truck. We're gonna drill out this hole for one of the license plate screws big enough for the Schrader valve to fit through. We're now gonna cut the auxiliary air hose. It's very important when cutting these hoses, you want a very nice, clean cut. We're now going to splice into this air hose to install a T-fitting for the auxiliary air hose.
With the T-fitting installed, we can now route the auxiliary air hose. We're now going to install this nut and washer on the Schrader valve. This will be on the back side of the bumper. Then we're going to put a washer on there, a lock washer, and then a nut. We're now at the final stages of this project. What we have to do now is the wiring. We're going to mount a relay for the system to one of these self-tapping screws. Reinstall the screw. Now we can plug in the connector to the manifold. We're going to connect the ground for the compressor on this screw. We're now going to connect the power wire from the relay to the compressor. We need to cut it, strip it, and crimp it, and then we can put it together. Now that it's crimped, we can connect it to the compressor. With everything connected back here, we can now run the wiring harness up to the engine bay and connect it to the fuse panel. We now have the wiring harness ran all the way up to the engine bay. Now we're going to connect this connector to the ground wire and connect it to the negative terminal. And then we'll connect the power wire to the fuse box. Now we can move on to the fuse box. We're going to tap into a 15 amp fuse using the provided fuse tap. This is the provided fuse tap that we're going to be using. Just simply remove the fuse, put this tap around it, and reinstall the fuse. We're now going to use this inline fuse holder connected to the fuse tap and then to the power wire for the harness. Now connect the fuse holder to the fuse tap. We're finished with the fuse panel now, we can close it. With the fuse still out of the fuse holder, you can strip both wires and crimp them together. Now we can install the 15 amp fuse. Yeah. 
Now we can test the system and also clean up the wiring. This is the remote that they provide. To turn it on, hit one of the, the dotted buttons and then go up. You can either press the button to go up with one pound increments or hold it and it'll go up with five pound increments. And same thing with going down. So we're at five PSI right now. We'll take it up to 30. And now we can test out the system. We're gonna pump it up to 30 PSI. All right, the system's working good. Now we're gonna let it down. Our airlift ride control system is installed. It works great. It's gonna make towing and hauling a lot better and safer. Installation should take you three to five hours, and before you know it, you'll be heading down the road.